Hi, I'm David DeCoste, the Director of Campus Ethics Programs at the Markula Center for Applied Ethics. And in this short video today, we'd like to apply our framework for ethical decision making to the issue of climate change. It's a shorthand for much more complex theories of ethics, and we believe it can illuminate all kinds of problems from the interpersonal to the global. The framework has three sections. The first section simply says, what are ethics? Principles and practices that tell us how we ought to behave. And also, what are not ethics? Feelings, law, religion, culture, and science are not ethics. The second section tells us about classic patterns of what we call moral reasoning. These are traditions that have helped people over generations think about how they ought to act. We understand these are distinct realms of ethical theory, but we also believe these are ways people habitually think when they address complex ethical problems. And our framework is meant to boil down these complex things into user-friendly language that can illuminate our own intuitions and help us make decisions in the face of complex problems. The third area of the framework is how to make an ethical decision. Here we have five steps we think are helpful in doing this. The first step is recognize an ethical issue. Climate change, of course, we know is a profoundly contentious political issue. It is a massive scientific and economic issue. That's where the question of ethics comes in. So we invite you to consider this perhaps especially in terms of events happening around the world. These things are caused by climate change according to great scientific consensus, and these things are causing harm to real people and to ways of life, and it's that harm that gives rise to our ethical concern. The second step is get the facts. Of course we know with climate change there's a huge dispute about various matters, the facts are the climate is warming in a very rapid way. Humans are contributing to climate change. The third step in the framework for ethical decision making is evaluating alternative actions. Here we turn to the five traditions of moral reasoning I referred to earlier. Utility. Utility is very allied with an economic way of thinking and economics understood in a moral sense, not simply as a social science. Here we can think of practices or decision-making modules like cap and trade or carbon taxes as ways for societies to address the challenge of climate change, not simply as an economic matter, but also in a profoundly ethical sense. Rights. The rights question with climate change absolutely pertains to the human rights of all of us to live safe, productive lives and we might think especially of people caught in terrible wildfire situations and how climate change is affecting their human right to do precisely that. Justice and equality. We're in a very complex matter of justice with a global issue like climate change. But I think it's very important for us to think about who bears the brunt of climate change? How are the costs of climate change distributed? And are those burdens borne equally? I would argue not. And I think it's very important for us to pay attention to those people all around the world, especially in poorer areas, who are bearing the burden of climate change through rising seas and sort of defenseless responses to monsoons and typhoons and the like. The common good pertains to those goods that we all share in common, and the climate is literally perhaps the greatest example of a common good. Here we have to think of the classic ethical category, the tragedy of the commons, which really is climate change writ large. All of us or each of us using more damaging this common good that we all must share at some point, we have to consider ending that tragedy. Finally, character and virtue. This really pertains to what kind of people do we want to be? And I think climate change poses this question in important and difficult ways. We've lived for many, many years with patterns of consumption, ways of being, things we like to do that we now see are causing harm. So how might we transform character to respond to the great challenge before us now.
The fourth category is to make a decision. I think it's very important to think about making that decision and being in some way public with it, being willing to explain it, to justify it, especially because of the contentious nature of climate change. The fifth step is to act and reflect on your action. In the face of climate change, acting can seem overwhelming. How do we act in the face of such a massive issue? but I think it's always better to do something rather than nothing. I think it's also important for us to consider what many ethicists, philosophers, theologians are saying about the response to climate change, given its truly epic and massive possible consequences for us, that what's now before us is an action they call the great work, a true reimagination of the way humans interact with the natural world and a way that will guide us as we move into what we hope will be a renewed human future. We hope this brief video has helped you become more familiar with the framework for ethical decision making of the Markle Center for Applied Ethics. We hope that you apply it to considering the great challenge of climate change as well as any other ethical issues. I also invite you to consider the other articles on the ethics spotlight on which this video is appearing, articles by my colleagues here at Santa Clara University about the ethical challenge of climate change.